Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Joshua Goldstein. standing in between you and lunch, so hopefully I can do my job and get you as excited um, about what we're doing uh, in California as I am. Um, I want to talk about the idea of making data open automatically, and I want to do it in the context of some of the work we're doing around criminal justice data, police data, uh, in with the state of California. But first of just a little bit of context in addition to Hans' kind introduction. Um, we're very much a startup, and, and as Hans mentioned, we're very much trying to find that space where you can take the things that work in Silicon Valley um, and apply them to really hard, highly regulated industries, um, government being the main one for us. And our starting point is, is both as technologists, uh, but also as people who have spent time in government and fundamentally think that government um, uh, is worth working with and improving, which I know is not a controversial statement here, but occasionally is in, in, in where I come from. Um, so our company started three years ago. Uh, out of a program in Washington called the Presidential Innovation Fellowship, which was President Obama's initiative to bring technologists into government. And there's been a really exciting group of companies, entrepreneurs, social, uh, you know, NGO-oriented folks uh, who have come out of both the Presidential Innovation Fellowship and another wonderful movement called Code for America. Um, and. And I think you know we're one story in this broader in this broader movement that I think um, you know is, is happening here as well. Um, so it's starting in you know 2014 and earlier, uh, there was a number of shootings of black young men by police uh, around the U.S., including uh, Tamar Rice here, who was shot in Cleveland in 2014. And it sort of sparked a conversation uh, about what the role, uh, what the relationship between police, race, uh, safety, um, gun violence, um, what, what kind of world do we want to live in um, in the US? And I actually think this is a particularly interesting uh, challenge where open data can really contribute to the conversation because um, there's both a lot of emotion involved, obviously, uh, but there's also a lack of good data. And we really need to come to a conclusion on very, very hard questions um, about uh, racial bias, about poverty, um, and there are things that we can't do without good data. And so uh, our friends in the California Department of Justice, um, in, in light of this movement, launched a open data project called Open Justice. Um, and a lot of the data in Open Justice is about police interaction with communities across the state. So there's hundreds of police departments, um, their interactions with the public, different types of crime rate, um, but they had a challenge when they first launched this in 2015. And by the way, this is really from the leadership of the Attorney General who runs the Department of Justice in California named Kamala Harris, um, who's a very, very visionary at, at the role of data, technology, and, um, and, and public safety and criminal justice. Um, but they had this technical problem. It was a very small team. Like many open data initiatives, it was um, very high profile, but relatively understaffed. Um, and so the two or three folks working on it had the challenge that they had to rummage through these amazingly out of date um, technical systems. Um, some of the standards you know, include police RMS record management system, you know, Microsoft SharePoint based systems. Um, 
things where the level of ETL, extract, transform, and load work that had to be done once the data was collected was absolutely enormous. And not only was it an efficiency problem, but it was also a buy-in problem because as you know, transforming organizations, helping them become more open only really works if you have buy-in, not just from the top, but from the people at the operational levels of these agencies. So DOJ, uh, the folks leading this initiative, asked the question, you know, why does data publication have to come at the expense of improving digital services? Why can't the two be hand in hand? Why can't the way California DOJ does business look like what we just saw you know, with the train schedules, automatic publication, modern standards, and, and the like. And we had been thinking about this as a company as well, coming from the open data movement, um, and, and sort of along with DOJ came to the, um, the you know, sort of starting point almost that, that data, open data works when it helps our society make sense of complex problems, and that was clearly needed in the case of criminal justice at this very heightened emotional moment in the US. But open data is sustainable when it makes data production dramatically easier for people in government, not harder. But what I've observed in the US is too often there's um, being part of an open data movement for a city or a state is a tax. Um, you know, they, when you go to uh, open data conferences, uh, industry conferences, too often, you know, there's, uh, it's really about training and extracting the data and doing that um, on the ground thing. So, um, you know, from a basic uh, getting people in a large organization on board, um, that seems to be in the reverse. Um, so we built a platform called Screen Door um, for a number of different use cases. Probably the one we're most excited about is the link between digital services and open data. Um, and so we see Screen Door as a platform that transforms how government delivers digital services, allowing them to become open by default, uh, much like how, what you've seen in some of the other examples uh, from industry. And I'll just very briefly go through um, what the platform looks like and what we're doing. So you have the context. We work with cities, states, and federal agencies in the US, as well as a few um, few uh, government agencies abroad, including, I'm happy to say, here in Switzerland, um, where we're just launching screendoor.ch um, and hoping to do a lot more uh, work with the, with the government here. Um, and, and really at its core, and I'm not going to go through the technical specs too quickly, or uh, too in detail, but it's really uh, three things. It's a collaborative database. You know, a space where people on teams can evaluate information that comes in and do so in a way that takes it out of email, out of spreadsheets, out of um, outdated formats like the ones we mentioned before. It's custom workflows, so um, often we've observed, you know, the city of Los Angeles, for example, to publish open data requires four or five different approvals depending on the type of information and its level of security. So we're able to customize that um, in, in great detail and automate that as needed. And finally, you know, just a very simple uh, drag and drop form builder. And you see a form we have here uh, in Switzerland um, around uh, public feedback on draft legislation. But really, you know, nothing, as Hans sort of alluded to earlier, nothing I've described here is world-changing technology, uh, form builders, uh, workflows, and collaborative databases have existed for a long time. Uh, they, in most large enterprises in the US, particularly government, they're still in versions that um, are either paper or on a desktop. Um, so sort of satisfying, turning them into software as a service so anyone, not just the IT department, can stand up data collection, evaluation, and publication 
um, can do that at scale over and over, and that's what we're doing with the California Department of Justice, is taking those processes, um, their interactions with police departments, their uh, interactions with lawyers, and turning them into screen door projects, with the result being that they can automatically put, be pushed to open data. So, you know, we're agnostic about the, um, the uh, type of open data portal that you use or build on your own. Uh, open, da open Justice, um, they built their own in-house system. We do a lot of work with Socrata, CCAN, and others. Um, but really the idea is that you have a modern, flexible, uh, simple standard of data that can automatically be pushed to uh, open data via a robust API. And really, so, you know, we're trying to sort of cut down both, um, you know, deliver a real value to the frontline teams in government who are in front of, say, collecting warrants or uh, collecting FBI mandated information from every single police department in the state. If we can make their job 10x easier and make what they do open by default, that is going to be a win for us. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we are really excited for this to be available globally. So you know, we're a uh, cloud-based platform and we're now expanding into regions in the EU and Switzerland in particular um, and, and in multiple languages. Um, so, I just want to sort of observe at a very high level um, sort of three trends that I think are real opportunities for the sort of next generation of, of open data. Um, the first is that government will be forced to do a lot more with a lot less, and this is a huge opportunity. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, governments are being squeezed budget-wise, operational-wise, so for them to be purchasing, uh, you know, software, legacy software for hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars is no longer going to be feasible. So of course there's a movement of people within government who uh, want to do things in a new way, who want to run their organizations like a startup, and we love those guys. Um, but what we think is happening is a much more macro, fundamental trend uh, towards more operationally efficient government. And if you can do that in a way that is biased towards openness, that's a huge opportunity. And the second is that government is becoming a platform. Our ambition and what we hope to do with DOJ is to become sort of the data pipes for criminal justice data for California. And, you know, as I said, deliver value in a, in a bunch of different ways. First, to the very frontline people who are often the most resistant to open data in government, make their lives uh, at work much happier because uh, they don't have to deal with 1990s desktop technology anymore. Um, but also really unleash what you can do once you have those modern standards. And open data is one giant area of that but there are so many more things that you can do once you have the data in a modern, usable set of formats, the things you can build on top of that in terms of applications um, and things that actually serve citizens better become really, really exciting. And that's where I think um, this overlap with sort of what government is gonna look like in the future comes back to both open data and some of these core infrastructure changes. We can't make modern government without changing the core operational data platforms first. And then finally, the way that uh, government is thinking about data security and procurement, meaning how they buy things, what types of companies they can work with, whether they can only work with the IBMs of the world or whether they can work with startups, which is an entirely new world for them often. Um, that, that disposition is starting to change. Um, and there, there are becoming, there are starting to be new funding mechanisms that are friendlier to newer companies. Uh, so what we foresee is a change in the way government as an enterprise produces data, delivers value to citizens in the same way that we're seeing that already with many other regulated industries, whether it's healthcare, or financial technology, and these sorts of things. Um, 
So with that, I will end, and we have a few ways that you can follow us. Um, we like to uh, tell stories about innovators in government and open data uh, on our podcast called Rewiring Government, um, and also love to, to be in touch and, and learn more about what all of you are working on. Thanks.